where business ideas and passions turn into profit. Napkin ideas are no longer tucked away in drawers, and women around the globe are turning their hobbies into million-dollar businesses. Welcome to Million Dollar Hobbies. Here's your host, world-renowned jewelry designer and Shop HQ celebrity, Victoria Wick. Welcome to another episode of the Million Dollar Hobbies podcast. I am so excited to be talking about the next, I guess, topic. And this one is called the, I don't know what I should actually title this. So I'm going to leave the title out because it's going to be talking about the counterpoint trends about sales and marketing. So basically how to get your first sale, how do you market to people, your target market, all those, you know, people are talking about this. Uh, there are artic- tons of articles, mastermind classes, and, you know, on and on and on. And I want to tell you, I'm here to buck all those trends and all the myths. And so if you are brand new starting out in a business, or maybe you already own a small business and you're just learning about the sales funnels, uh, you know, getting approached by people telling you that they can build all these funnels. And there, in fact, I've even saw a book about, do you know the difference between a website and a sales funnel? Okay. So you get the idea. So basically for, let me just make sure that we all are under the same, same wavelength. when we talk about sales, marketing, and then also a sales funnel, which is used to be one of the most favorite ways of people to get a lot of customers into literally like a funnel. So they'll capture your email somehow, they'll buy it, your email list from someone or somehow they get your email. And then once you're, they've captured this, your name and address and email, uh, and maybe they'll even know a little bit more about you, maybe your gender, your income, they will put you in this funnel because their belief is you're not going to buy it the first time they send it to you. So they pretty much send you a whole series of emails. So they're trying to kind of turn you your name into this funnel. So when, they, when it shoots out at the other end, you typically will buy something from them. So that is a sales funnel. And there's all these marketers who will actually do all the pre-marketing to get you into the funnel. So there's a whole business going around this. And I think that, again, Think about when you're marketing anything, when you're starting a business, start marketing anything, uh, or maybe you you already have a successful business. You have to understand you are a consumer first before you're the marketer. So think about how it feels to be bombarded with emails. Okay. So because that's what a sales funnel does. A typical sales funnel will basically, they will give you some little freebie or something, and you will get this email from someone. And that once they get the capture your email, They'll give you like seven, typically a five to seven day sequence of emails. Hey, you know, nice meeting you. You know, I don't know if you know, but I'm an expert in X, Y, Z. And uh, I have this, you know, wonderful product or something like that. And then the next day you get a, you know, a little bit more of a cranked up email and, you know, continues on until the fifth day. And then if you, based on whether you click on any one of those or not, there's a whole separate sequence. So you, you might get up to like 30 emails in 30 days. As you can see, that's a lot of emails. And I will tell you that people who do this for a living will tell you two things. The more leads, the more sales, okay? The more leads you have, the more sales. And then the more emails you send out, the more sales, okay? This, these are what, what I'm being told all the time. I'll tell you this, as a consumer, if somebody sends me five emails in five days, I delete. By the time like a third email comes in, I delete, delete, delete. Because like, and then if they send me another series of five or six emails, I will delete like just their name completely because it's just ridiculous to get that many emails. If you can't spit it out in the first two or three times while you're really great for me, I just think it's not really great. So as you can see, I don't actually believe in the traditional sales funnels. I do think that uh, capturing some sort of uh, information about you and only if there's a fit, right? Only if there's a fit. So if you, if somebody bought your email list from a skincare company, and now they're selling you, let's say, uh, you know, I guess gym equipment, it might make some sort of a, it's, I would say that's about a 50, 60% match. But if you bought a mailing list from, you know, a skincare company, and now you're selling maybe like, you know, uh, I don't know, baby clothes or something like that, that's not a, a, like a perfect fit. It, it might be a 20% fit. You know, there's a lot of, if, if there's a good fit and you think that you can really transform somebody's life. So what does that mean? So, cause you know, this, I, I think I figured out what I'm going to call this episode. It's how do you actually get your first sale? From anybody, if, if you're, you know, if you're already existing customer or existing business, maybe you're getting uh, your sales from your existing customers. So if you have new group of people that you want to target or you want to launch a new product, how do you then get your first sales? So the first sale I would say is earn their trust. 
how do you earn their trust? So it's always like, um, and I, I'm also being told that, you know, you find the problem, you solve the problem, then it creates a new problem. So this is a great, great example. So gain your trust. So how do you gain your trust? That's a, that's a problem, right? Because first you don't have trust levels. So you got to build a trust. And then the next problem is, okay, I understand I need to build trust. How do I build trust? You know, and so on. So I would say you build trust by trying to engage with them, try to understand what it is that they, that they want from you. Right. So for example, if you don't know anything about the person and say if somebody, yeah. you got this email list from a skincare company, you might want to ask, I mean, you know, is, does this person have a problem skin? Does this person, you know, have a, does she also, you know, exercise? Is she like a fitness guru? Is she into health and fitness on top of the skincare? Or is she into basically, you know, fixing a problem? Because a lot of the, the more information you have, the more, you know, but if you find out, for example, you know, let's just take, take dial this back a little bit. If you go to a party, you wouldn't go up to somebody and say, hey, I'm Victoria. Nice to meet you, Joe. Would you like to buy my mastermind? I don't think that would work, right? They're going to think you're crazy. Or if you walked up to, hey, you know, uh, my name is Victoria. Nice to meet you. You know, nice to meet you, Elizabeth. And uh, would you like to buy my hair care? Okay, same thing. You want to have a dialogue. You want to, you know, ask when you meet someone for the first time, hey, how are you? Great. How are you? What is it that you do? You know, and, uh, you know, how is the weather? How are the kids? How is the family? Then you find out a little bit about them. They might say, oh, as a matter of fact, you know, I'm such a health guru and, you know, it's really a hard, uh, I'm having a really hard time during COVID because, you know, the rest of my family loves eating junk food. And well, that's a piece of information that you have if you happens to be selling nutritional foods, for example. So get to know a lot about them take an interest in them. And you can do this by taking, you know, like offering a poll on your website, or you could add, just simply ask questions, um, you know, ask them to help you. Uh, that's one way to um, gain their trust because, you know, as consumers, we want to know that this person, whoever is selling something to me, they, they've done their homework and they at least want to know a little bit about me before they start to pitch me with a $5 product or $50,000 product. It doesn't really matter. You want them to know about you. You want them to be interested in you. You want them to be vested in your future. You want them to... Because, you know, let me tell you, no one's paying anymore for information. They're all paying for transformation. So you want to make sure that you, you convey that. So, you know, if you get the opportunity, you can then talk about other people's lives you've transformed or maybe even use an example. You know, if when, I don't know, Kim Kardashian wanted to lose weight and she did, you know, these type of exercise, she wore these kind of hurdles and I have something very similar, for example, that could be a storytelling and also interesting way to actually gain a little bit of understanding because you're tell telling the person you, you've done all this research, you know what's going on. And then the other way you also gain trust is sharing your expertise, right? So if you, for example, I happen to know a lot about video. I happen to know quite a bit about, you know, video production, how to use lighting to your favor, how to put video makeup on, for, which is very different than print uh, makeup on. Video is, works very, the lighting diff works very differently and you have to wear actually different makeup for, you know, so when I, when I, whenever I used to do print stuff, I would have one makeup artist do my print makeup. And then if I go straight on to doing a commercial, I would have a different makeup artist and hair for video. Okay. So I happen to know a lot about that. So if in this day and age of, you know, everything going to video from even from your social media post to your brand video on your website to, you know, even a podcast like this, when you have to do video, that knowledge I have is really important. And it's a, it's a knowledge a lot of people don't know anything about, by the way. So if I share that information freely with potentially your clients, I mean, you don't tell them everything, you know, for, I mean, I've been doing TV, live TV. I think I've done thousands, tens of thousands of hours of live TV under every condition. You know, we, I've done them on location, on cruise ships, on, you know, in the desert mountains to doing it in, you know, countries like Japan. And of course we can do some in the studio and quite a bit of it in my own home. I'm not going to share every single thing I know, but I share enough things that are marketable, things that I could easily sell. If I did a video series about video presentations, about how to talk, how to create content, how to get your hair and makeup done in five, 10 minutes, yeah, people will pay, you know, two, $300 for that. I know a lot of people who would, but if I share that to a uh, potential clients, they'd be more likely to keep coming back to check and see what else is free. So I would say leading with generosity, sharing your information as much as you can without charging them 
is going to cause them to be much more interested in you. So that all you would have to do then is really offer them and just give them a compelling message as to why this could be really important to you. You know, if I shared with you five mini videos on how to look great on video, how to talk uh, great, you know, how to talk compellingly on video and how to not get nervous and how to pitch somebody on video, for example. And then I actually had a mastermind, let's say, about video presentations and how that could catapult your brand, explode your brand sales by doing, you know, a few things. You're more likely to respond to that than if I just sent you a blank, you know, 31 emails, like in seven days. That's a lot of a lot of emails, <laughs> if, if, you wanna, if you know what I mean. I mean, I don't even want anybody who's, who's got that kind of time on their hands actually to be in my mastermind, because obviously this person, you know, really doesn't have a lot of other time to do the right thing for their business when they're reading that many emails. So I would say, you know, that's really uh, sharing your knowledge. Another way you can collapse time in terms of gaining trust is to really learn the art of shining a light on other people. So for example, you know, if your social media is full about me, 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 like, you know, I just want this, I want that, or, um, you know, I'm drinking my fancy coffee, or that brainiac, I'm a genius, you know, I do whatever. You can do that to a certain extent to, you know, you can do that very effectively. You could actually do that to ex sort of like establish your expert authority. And if you do them in real small snippets, but the more effective way to do it would be to shine a light on someone else. For example, I actually, you know, I, I don't know which day, I think it was Father's Day. Father's Day, and I posted a little thing about my father who immigrated here, sacrificed everything he possibly could. The poor man was so brave at that age. You know, he came to a country that he knew no one, didn't know a single soul, didn't speak English, didn't, uh, and then he found out all the money was taken with five kids, okay? So he did all of this stuff, never complained one time. And uh, my father's been gone, by the way. He uh, passed away in 1999. I posted something about my father. He never lost hope and he never lost the energy. He never literally uh, stopped learning. So at age, you know, over 50 years old, he actually got his doctorate here and he became the, actually he was a president of the uh, Oriental Medicine, like a, a university that is specialized in Oriental Medicine. And uh, so acupuncture, oriental medicine, alternative medicine, it's basically the same medical degree. So he wanted to actually shine a light into Eastern medicine to America. So well over age 50, he went to school with five kids, two jobs, okay? And he graduated at the top of his class. As I shone a light on him about, you know, his will to succeed and his commitment to the people he loved and his persistence, Right. So, you know, it got more likes than almost anything I posted, you know, over that whole weekend. Now, that's a one, ex one example. The other example could be that you could shine a light on maybe, you know, some of your clients. Uh, it could be just an incredible story. It could just be an incredible story from the BBC or the Wall Street Journal or, you know, the CNBC. I mean, occasionally, I mean, I read one time this kid who had to walk like something like 20 miles to go to uh, work and back. Okay. He walked, he didn't have a car and uh, he somehow still studied. I mean, he was like a janitor. He somehow studied and did all his things, got his high school degree and got accepted at Harvard. Okay. If you shine a light on something like that, it at least shows you the human side of you, the compassion and that you care that you're a normal person and that you're a likable person and you like the similar things. So shining a light on other people, it could be newspaper stories. It could be, you know, a nurse who, you know, went above and beyond. I'm dealing with that right now. My mother-in-law is a uh, hundred years old and the people that used to take care of her when she was in a retirement home, you know, on their time off, on their day off on Saturday, there's like five of them. They come and see her now, you know, as she's going through her last phase of her life at hundred. So shine a light on other people. It could be related to your brand. It could be related to the stuff you do. It could be completely different from that. But, you know, whatever you want to shine a light on, whether it's a, it's a strength, persistence, compassion, kindness, all of those stories exist out there in current world. So shining a light on other people is really great. And then 
Another way you can actually gain that trust is having other people talk about you. And that could be, you know, your uh, community leaders. If you do a lot of community uh, volunteer work, it could be your, you know, past clients. It could be your employees. It could be anybody that talk about you in a different light because you, they could talk about you in a way that's very different than the way you could talk about yourself. You know, you're not going to go up to somebody and say, Hey, uh, I'm beautiful. I'm gorgeous. I'm successful. And I'm whatever. You're not going to do that. But somebody, I mean, it could just be tacky. <laughs> Let's put it that way. But somebody else might say, you know, that I met Joe when I was, you know, volunteering at the homeless shelter. And I got to tell you, this man was the most compassionate, the most organized human being I've ever known. I mean, the guy had a schedule. He, you know, that was the only way we were going to be able to serve 400 people because he had the know-how. Well, if you were selling organization skills, for example, like organizing closets or whatever, that would be the perfect testimonial, even though they weren't necessarily selling your product. So have other people talk about you. And then I would say, lastly, repeat all of the above, right? And you'll find that sales will come naturally. You know, you don't have to send out these ugly emails like every single day for like seven, eight, nine, 10 days at a time. So again, if you're interested in uh, learning a little bit more about this, check out my website. I do have a lot of information there. If you want to join one of my masterclasses, you can do that too. Um, all of my masterclasses, by the way, are completely closed and they are, you know, by application only. So, and I forgot to mention in, in my previous videos, you, what I will do though, is I will share like a 20 minutes of my time. So you can actually book a call if you have a, uh, you know, business, a quick issue to deal with. I cannot share like more than that time, you know, freely all the time because I actually do have to work. So just wanted to, you know, give that quick review on sales and marketing, the best way by the way, sales and marketing are two completely different things. Marketing is very different than sales. I would say that the best way actually to get sales and marketing, we'll talk about how they're different because there's, you know, promotions, advertising, there's product, there's all the different ways you can actually create sales and also market. They're very different uh, functions. But, you know, if you haven't, if you've enjoyed this uh, session, please go ahead and review on Apple. That's how we are all kind of judged on, you know, how other people find you by, by review. So I don't need a great review. I just need an honest review. And then you can sign up for my upcoming book or upcoming webinars. You know, a lot of that, I'm trying to do as much of that as freely as I can. And so sign up for all of those. And as we close now, please check out my YouTube channel, Million Dollar Hobbies on YouTube. I just started this like last week. So it's going to, you know, I would, we hope that many of you will uh, visit, especially as I talk about video and how important the video is and the lighting and, you know, all, all of the, the equipment you have to have. So until next time, please stay healthy and happy. And remember, happiness is your choice. And I hope you make great choices and have a great week. Thank you for listening. You've been listening to Million Dollar Hobbies, where we turn dreams into reality and passion into profit. According to ancient Chinese proverb, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Congratulations on taking that first step today. For more information on how Victoria can help you turn your hobby into a million dollars and to download Victoria's free ebook on passion-based business ideas, visit milliondollarhobbies.com. And don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review the show on your favorite podcast player.